To begin my project, I took this piece of stained wood that I just had kicking around in my craft pile, and then I came in with the DecoArt Enchanted line of paints. So this black paint that I'm putting on here is the base coat. And then I came in with the DecoArt Enchanted in green. So this is the stunning iridescent top coat that we're gonna paint on. And this is done with the gold. So in the same line, just a different color. Then I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to take these glass beads that I picked up at my local dollar store and I'm going to begin making a Christmas tree shape. So I'm just going to line them up starting with the larger row at the bottom and just working my way up the top. I'm placing them in spots here and then I'm going to make sure I like the shape and everything before I glue them down. I found this cute little plastic snowflake in my Christmas craft collection and that's is what I'm gonna use for my star. I'm just using regular hot glue to glue the glass beads down and then making sure I pull away any hairs from the glue gun. And then I'm gonna glue my plastic snowflake in the top as well with some hot glue. For the base of my tree, I have these little wood log slices and they just come in a little pack from my dollar store. And I'm gonna take a pair of kitchen shears and I'm just gonna cut them right in half. And then I'm gonna place them on the bottom, sticking up like a 3D effect, almost like a realistic looking uh, tree stump. So this is what I'm using for the base. Once I have that gl glued down, I thought that the whole project needed just a little bit more embellishment, something just to really make it stand out a little bit more and jazz it up. So I came in with some Mod Podge and some gold foil and I just did like a gold leafing foil technique just around the edges to create a nice classy and elegant border and this just kind of gives my project a little more glam because I felt like it needed just a little something extra just to glam it up in time for Christmas. So I let that set and then I brushed away the excess. Then to add just the icing on the cake, I came in with this shimmer. So this is from the Enchanted line as well from Decor, And this is just like a top coat that you could put on top of things just to give it that little shimmer and shine. So it's like clear, but then when it catches the light, you'll just see little tiny flecks of sparkle. So it's really nice because it's not quite a sparkle, it's just a shimmer. And these are my finished projects here. So you can see the one I he did here with the green iridescent and then the gold as well. On the green iridescent, I decided to go with rose gold leafing instead of the gold. I just thought it complemented the green iridescent better. And I'm so happy with how this project turned out. I hope this inspires you to get creative this Christmas and craft something unique for your home. Thank you so much for watching Home Talk and we'll see you next time. So for this project, I was actually looking for a cylinder vase, um, but at my local Dollar Tree, I could not find one. They didn't seem to have them in stock. So went with plan B and I was able to find one of these little BPA free um, water bottles. And uh, what we're gonna do first is we are going to be gluing some of these um, little gems that you can find at Dollar Tree um, to this cylinder. I want this to kind of be random. I want these to kind of fit together. So I'm gonna start from the bottom and I'm gonna work my way up. So I'm gonna be using my hot glue gun and we're just gonna kind of work our way around. Now I'm using Gorilla Glue Sticks for this project and so they tend to dry pretty quickly. Highly recommend. So you don't have to worry about waiting too long to for these all to, uh, to dry. All right, so we're gonna keep going around. So we will be back when we've made our, a little more progress working our way up uh, the water bottle. So we'll be back. All right, so I've done a couple rows all the way up. So we're gonna keep going and we're gonna go all the way to the top with our gems. I find that opening up all of my, uh, my packs of these gems was really helpful, especially going around because they're all different sizes and you wanna make sure that they you know, you're fitting all of them around. So I would definitely say if you plan to do this project, kind of, you know, test out different sizes and make sure everything's gonna fit um, so that you don't have to like take any of them off and like reposition it. Cause it really is kind of like a puzzle in that way. So we're gonna keep moving up the, uh, the, the side of this cylinder water bottle and then we will move on to our next step. So we will be back. All right, so now we're just gonna let this uh, dry completely before we move on to our next step. So we will be back. All right, so now that this is dry, we are gonna be using plaster of Paris 
and some water in a container. As you can see, I kind of already mixed up my mixture. You're gonna do two parts plaster of Paris, one part cold water. Um, and I just kind of continued to add until I got the consistency I was looking to achieve. Now, what I'm gonna be attempting here is we are gonna, we are gonna do some faux grouting over the gems and then um, we'll move on to uh, the next step in this piece. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start applying. And I have a couple little putty knives here because I don't wanna apply too much. But I'm just gonna go over the gems to try and fill in the, the openings between the gems. And the important thing when you are working with Plaster of Paris is you wanna make sure that you use all of it, you don't wanna let it sit because then it's gonna harden. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to work this on around the, uh, the water bottle. All right, so now that our vase, as you can see, this is a vase, formerly a water bottle. Um, now that this has dried, I actually went back in and added a little bit more um, to some areas around the top since I had this kind of upside down. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna be sanding like crazy. So I've got multiple, um, I got a sanding block. I've got, these are 220 um, sheets of sandpaper. I'm actually using some of my sanding discs from a recent project as well, which are a little bit rougher. So they'll take more of this off. Um, they're actually at a 60 versus like a 220. And I believe that this one is around, I don't know, like I want to say like a 120 possibly. Um, so I'm going to start with the rougher and then we're going to like take a bunch of this off. So we're going to make it look like it's snowing on my table and we're just gonna sand away so when we get to a place where we're feeling like we've unveiled enough of the gems and we've got like that nice texture going with the gems versus you know the the space between them um, we're gonna move on to the next step so um, we'll be back all right, so now I'm at a place where I feel really happy with the texture I'm seeing and um, I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is painting. And this is probably one of my favorite chalk paints. Um, I do want this to have a matte finish to it. So we are going to be using some chalk paint. You can always use spray paint as well. That is an option. So make sure you shake it up or stir it up really well. I'm gonna use the stuff out of the cap first. Make sure all the excess is off. We are gonna paint. And I bought these um, brushes from Dollar Tree just to try and make this as much of a Dollar Tree project as I could. Um, so we're gonna utilize these for the, for the project. Now with the chalk paint, you're probably gonna notice the first layer um, isn't gonna give you complete coverage. So just um, be patient, let it dry. It dries pretty fast. And then the second coat definitely will give you more coverage. All right, so now that my vase has been painted, um, it's kind of got that fun, modern, uh, va textured vibe to it. And there you have it. This Dollar Tree water bottle has turned into a really cool, modern, contemporary vase. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this project and you feel inspired to try this one in your home. Thank you so much for watching Home Talk, and I will see you in the next one.